tells us. For the people that are like, well, if I need to be Christian, I need to stop sinning. What does the Bible say? Let me show you. Romans 3, 22 to 23. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that we're all sinners, we've all fallen short. So are you just, like I said, are you doomed? Because I'm a sinner, I can't become righteous to enter heaven. show another verse. Okay, so Hebrews ten, fourteen through eighteen. For by one offering he hath perfected. He's not saying saying he made per, he made us perfected but hold on for by one offering he hath perfected forever forever all of eternity them that are sanctified now where and then this is um, Hebrews 10 18 now where remission of there this is there is no more offering for sin so Hebrews 14 is telling us by one offering which is Jesus dying on the cross. He had perfected forever them that are sanctified. So who is those that are sanctified? It's the believers, the believers in Jesus Christ. And what else is he telling us? Now, where remission of this, there's no more offering for sin. So what else is it telling us? All the goodness that we can do. God, I'm a sinner, but it's okay because I'm going to go help this homeless person. I'm going to do some good stuff. There's no more offering for sin. He did the work. He's done it. So what's our job? Is it to try to be perfect? Well, it tells us as well. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So, if we follow, if we truly believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and He died for our sin, it's not that all of a sudden, oh no, I'm not going to sin anymore. He died for our sins, yes. But it's saying we're a new creature. So our desires become different. When we start to truly believe that Jesus is the way, we don't desire things of the flesh. We still may have those inclinations to go towards those things, but where is our mind at? We start to realize not to trust ourselves because a person like me, maybe I'm hungry and maybe I'm like, let me go steal from the grocery store, steal some Oreos. Yeah, it's bad, but it's not that bad because I'm hungry and it's going to make me feel good after. And maybe I can feed my brother too, but, and I'm not hurting anybody. But our desires will become different. Our trust will be in the Lord that he will provide and protect us. So it's not just knowing that God is um, the Savior and died for our sins. It's truly believing that it's true. And if you really believe, then you will strive to inherit that kingdom by following his teachings because you believe that that is what's best for your life. What else does it say? So does that mean that a lot of people will say, oh, you need to repent. You need to repent, repent, repent. Which 
But yes, this is true. You should repent from your sins and say, I'm not going to be chained to those things. But if you are an imperfect person and you keep trying to do perfect things by not sinning anymore, you're going to bring yourself misery. Give it up to the Lord. Stop saying, I can do these things. I can do this. You will know the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's what that's talking about. Give it up to the Lord. He can do it. So let's talk about repenting. Hebrews 10, 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers then they're undo perfect. So we're trying to do perfect things by repenting, by saying, it's okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for sinning. I'll go do this good thing now. It's saying, these things will never make us perfect. We do this year after year. We continuously sin and then go back to God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. When it said that all our sins are already forgiven forever and telling us we're not going to be perfect. These things don't make us perfect. But the Bible says we're perfected. Yes, because it is what God has done for us, not what we can do for God. Remember, for by one offering, He perfected us. I'll say one more verse. Two more, actually. Two more things. So, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11 Know ye, not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, it's asking, be not deceived, neither fornicators, which is people that are having, um, you know, that are doing the deeds outside of marriage, All right, idolaters, people that are making um, <laughs> idols, they're worshiping idols, nor adulterers, which are cheaters, nor effeminate, which is like, you know, homosexuality, nor abusers of themselves, which is playing with yourself, you know, nor thieves, nor covetous, which is people who get, you know, covet other people's things, jealousy pretty much, nor drunkards, drunkards is, you know, drunks, people that get drunk, nor revilers, people that have rivals, nor extortioners, people that use their power against the weak, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Let me read it again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It's telling us, if you're all these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what the Bible says. But, so now you're saying, oh man, I guess I'm screwed. I guess I'm screwed. Unless I, maybe if I repent like right before I die, then all my sins are forgiven. No, remember guys, your sins are forgiven. He did the work already. Don't forget this last verse. So that was 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. But listen to what 11 says. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Ye are sanctified. Ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. Some of you guys feel like sinners today. If you guys feel hopeless because you feel like you can't please a perfect God, let it go. Believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior. It's okay, guys. We all know what it feels like to say that you're not going to do something anymore. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to lie anymore. And I continue to do it. You're going to feel like a loser. You're going to feel like you failed 
every time because it is not you the one you are not the one that can make yourself strong you are not the one that can become perfect there is only one perfect but he perfected you he washed away your sins so it's okay guys let go of your sin I guess that's what I was trying to get to this whole time. Let go of your sin. So what is being a Christian? Is it not sinning anymore? Is it going to church every Sunday, reading your Bible, when it tells us that these offerings that we do year unto year will not make us perfect? So it's not putting your faith in these things. It's putting your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you truly have faith in Him, then you will follow in His ways. So yes, you will go to church because the Bible talks about building up God's church. The Bible does talk about working hard for the Lord. The Bible does talk about, um, you know, the Bible blesses people with, God has blessed people with riches on this earth. Does talk about gaining peace. The Bible does talk about praying and confessing. So yes, it does talk about these things, but without Jesus, it's nothing. It's in vain for yourself, for yourself to feel better. Lord, I'm sorry. Please, please, please forgive me. Ah, okay. I said sorry. I feel good now. No. Do it for him do it for the Lord because you have faith in him so you know that you are doing wrong because he is the standard of good but yeah that was a little ramble is it okay to sin no but is it okay that you are a sinner yes because you were born that way God knows this that's why he sent his son to die for you so it's okay it's not okay, but it's okay. Do you understand? You're not chained to sin. You are free because what if Christ, what if Christ has done for you? So I don't ask that any of you just drops everything and just believe in God now, but I ask that you just seek Him, seek Him, and when you seek Him, seek Him purely. Don't seek Him for yourself. God, I feel bad all the time. Please help me. Seek him truly, and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Um, do not lean on your own understanding. Uh, let me just look it up. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And that'll be the last one. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. Submit to him. What does submitting mean? It means to do the things that he says are good for you. Are you going to mess up? Absolutely. That's why he died for us. But if you submit to him, if you say, God, I'm not righteous, but he will make your path straight if you follow in his ways. So just seek him, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a long video. I think I might do two uploads today. I might upload this one right away and one later tonight. Um, but yeah, God bless you all. Thank you, thank you for continuing to support me and watching the videos. I'm almost close to getting paid on YouTube. I'm like this close. So let's keep, you know, running it up. That'll help me a lot. I'm not going to flood the videos with ads, but, man, I work a lot, so it would definitely help my family, you know, maybe with just a little bit of food, extra food or something every month. Who knows? But yeah, God bless you all. Let me know 
what you guys want to see next. Peace.